Hey everybody, this is Katie Weaver, and I'm going to talk to you about the full moon. <laughs> you may have seen me do these before, though I haven't done them quite in this format. We're going to try this and see what happens. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the full moon, and then we're going to do a collective reading for the full moon with the fairy tale tarot deck. So this is going to be fun. So the moon is full tomorrow, August the 3rd. This is the sturgeon moon. Yeah, the sturgeon moon. Why? Because once upon a time, when this moon was named, you know, all the moons have some kind of funky name, like the beaver moon or, you know, there's a lot of jokes there. I won't make them. <laughs> but the sturgeon in the Great Lakes and Lake Champlain uh, are were said to be much easier to catch during a full moon, and particularly this full moon. So it got the name, the full moon. What is a sturgeon anyway? A sturgeon are these enormous ancient fish. They are considered to be prehistoric. They are in lakes uh, all across uh, the U.S. and probably the globe, but I know of them uh, where I live. My dad caught a sturgeon once. The guide told him that it was over 100 years old. Now, sturgeon are catch and release. You can't keep them. You shouldn't keep them. What the hell would you do with that much fish? And ancient fish, too. That doesn't seem like a good time. But anyway, sturgeons are pretty amazing. So we're in an amazing moon. A couple of things to know about this moon. This moon is going to be really emotional. I know. That's what we need. More emotional stuff right now, right? <laughs> but that's the word on the street. This moon is pretty emotional. So don't do anything too hasty. Don't cut off all your hair. Don't elope. Don't buy a new car. Just sit back a little bit. You can let plans start to form. You can get excited. Just give yourself a minute. This isn't the time to really have to own up to any buyer's remorse, is it? So be a little careful. Also know that because it is such an emotional moon, we will probably see some emotional outburst here or there. Maybe from us, maybe from people around us. Be gentle, be kind, and please be forgiving because everybody's having a hard time right now, right? All righty. Well, I already pulled a card, so I'm going to tell you about it. This, of course, is from the Fairy Tale Tarot deck. This is fun. I love doing this. So I'm going to tell you a little about the card, and then I'll read you the story. So the card that I pulled is the Ace of Wands. It is. It looks like a wolf or a coyote. I think it's a coyote. It is. It's a coyote carrying a stick that's on fire. There's a mountain in the background. He's running through brambles. Uh, there's some rocks here. That's what the card looks like. Okay. So the story is how coyote stole fire. The culture is Native American. The key words are creative awakening inspiration, and new ideas. So we'll read the story and then we'll talk a little bit about it and interpret it. So here we go. Long, long ago, when the world was young, people lived without fire. During the day, they would warm themselves in the sun, but by evening, they would shiver under a cold canopy of darkness. Things went on like this for some time until wise old coyote happened by and asked them what the matter was. Coyote, please, get us fire before we perish in this cold, the people implored. Where can I find fire? asked Coyote. The only place you can get fire is from the fire beings who live in the top of the snow-covered mountain. But take heed, the people warned, for they are hideous creatures with long talons and will swipe at any creature that attempts to steal from their camp. They do not want anyone else to be in possession of such a great source of power. So Coyote followed an icy path that led to the mountain. When he made it to the top, he spied three fire beings dancing by an orange blaze. The fire beings were preoccupied with their rituals. When the snap of a twig broke their concentration, they turned to look but only saw a harmless coyote hunkered down nearby. Chuckling, they ignored the coyote and went back to their revelry. 
the coyote continued to observe the fire beings as they tossed fire branches and pine needles into the bright flames. Every time they fed the fire, it grew stronger and burned brighter. The coyote then scurried back to the dale and called a meeting of his animal friends, saying, We need to figure out how to get a piece of the fire being's fire. The animals agreed to help and formulated a plan. When the sun rose, Coyote returned to the fire being summit. After dancing all night, two of the beings had retreated to their lodge for rest. The third was left to watch over the fire, but it was fatigued as well and began to doze as the embers crackled through the morning dawn. At last it got up and returned to the lodge, thinking the fire would be fine without attendance. Coyote knew he had what he had to do, and he sprang into action. He grabbed a burning piece of wood and fled as fast as he could down the slippery slope. But it wasn't long before the fire beings were on his trail and in hot pursuit. Just as they touched the tip of Coyote's tail, Coyote yowled and looked behind him to see that his tail had been turned white. He then passed the fire to Fox, who was waiting by the path. The fox raced on until he too was burnt by the fire beings. He then passed it to Squirrel, the fire beings being with in an arm's length of squirrel, but this didn't deter the swift mammal. He ran harder and almost made it to safety before one of the beings touched his tail and made it curl. Squirrel practically flew to Chipmunk as he dashed out of his hiding hole and joined the relay. The fire beings tried to grab and claw at Chipmunk, but only managed to scorch his little tail as he passed the branch on to Frog. Frog grabbed the branch with his wide mouth and jumped as far as he could. The fire beings grabbed his tail, too, and ripped it right off. The now tailless frog did not flinch. He kept jumping until at last the branch flew into the wood. Wood swallowed up the fryer, fire and refused to give it back to the fire beings. The fire beings stared at wood but could not figure out how to get the fire out of wood. Defeated, they returned to the mountain leaving the glowing blaze behind. Coyote, being a wise member of the community, showed the people how to feed the fire with branches and pine needles. He then figured out how to get fire out of wood by rubbing two sticks together, and from that day on, people had a warm fire during the long winter nights. Okay, so let's break it down. The symbols and meaning, according to the book, Coyote is the benevolent trickster. He carries the fire of transformation. His movement suggests the directing of energies for productive gain. The spiral roots, I'll pull this card back up for you. The spiral roots fortify the dead trees, reminders of the coming and continuing flow of ideas and life, despite the illusion of dormancy. Faces can be seen within the trunks, figments of the hibernating thoughts. The squirrel in the background is swift and energetic. The smoke's trail extends to the forest and mountains in the background, illustrating the journey down the treacherous path. The mountain is the center. To climb it is to ascend to a higher place of awareness. The mist evokes a new sense of majesty or mystery. Nothing is set in stone. Rather, all is permeable and subject to change. The feathers attached to coyote's adornments suggest freedom, possibilities, and clarity. All right. So here's what the author has to say about when you pull this card. Our inner creativity has a chance to ignite into a period of renewed inspiration. By letting go of past perceived failures and allowing ourselves to absorb new energies, we can explore evocative ideas with reclaimed enthusiasm. So there you go. So what does that mean for us in the next full moon cycle? Well, obviously creativity is a theme. Really, really grasp that creativity as it comes up for you. Again, right over the full moon, don't do anything too hasty. Just let things marinate. Don't be too wild. But that's just for a couple of days, right? And then take some action. Maybe at work you can see how something could be, be doing 
done more efficiently. Maybe it's at home. Maybe it's a new creative project for you. Maybe it's a partnering. And that's the other big part of this, the community piece. Everybody helped, right? Everybody helped to reclaim the fire. So how can you work within your community? How can you partner with others, especially right now in such a you know, the climate that we're in right now of people being so divided and angry. How can you partner with others? How can you cooperate and collaborate at work and at home in ways that benefit you and benefit the community at large? And then Coyote. He's our trickster, but he's also our hero, right? He was patient. He waited for the right time. He asked for help. And then he offered the knowledge that he had to keep the fire going. Coyote is all of us, right? He's learning how to solve problems, how to solve them in efficient ways, in community-related ways. He asks for help. And how often do we forget to ask for help and to collaborate with others? So I think there's a lot of great lessons to be learned from this. I feel like the next two weeks could be really powerful for a lot of us. So let's embrace this full moon. Let's not forget Coyote and how he stole fire and gave it to the people. And be sure that we are also creative, thinking out of the box and working within community to help to strengthen ourselves and others around us. So there you go. Thanks so much for being here. If you'd like to learn more about me, just go check out katie-weaver.com. And as always, be sure to subscribe and share. Take care, guys. Happy full moon. Thank you.